Located within the forests of the Seymour Valley in Western Canada, previously unknown sites lived in by people with Japanese heritage have recently been discovered. These sites were initially used as logging camps for a few years around the 1920s. Evidence suggests that after logging ceased in the early 1920s, one of these camps continued to be occupied as some kind of a secret residential settlement between the years of 1920 to 1942. Approximately 1,000 artifacts have been discovered and recorded at this site. These include many dishes, as well as a wide variety of bottles such as medicine bottles, ink bottles, and alcohol bottles, many of which are also inscribed with Japanese characters. Other artifacts include dozens of cosmetic jars, several timepieces, buttons, work boots, and toothbrushes. Archaeological excavations have revealed many previous structures. Clusters of household items such as pieces of stoves, windows, and lantern glasses suggest that there were more than a dozen cabins or small houses at this site, each probably being lived in by a small family, with an overall population of probably about only 50 people. Excavations have also revealed several other kinds of structures. One of the most interesting is the base of a Japanese bathhouse known as an ofuro. Other structures include the rock-based structure that supported a wooden platform. This may have been the base of a small shrine. Also discovered was a deep wood-lined water reservoir, a privy, also known as an outhouse or a latrine, a garden area, and a solid wood road buried under a few centimeters of soil. No artifacts have been discovered that provide proof that people lived here from the early 1920s to 1942 when people of the Japanese descent in Canada were sent to internment camps. But there is considerable circumstantial evidence. This includes the presence of the solid wood roads in the camp. Roads such as this were typically removed when logging camps ceased operation. Evidence of traditional Japanese lifeways, including a community bathhouse, a shrine, and more than a dozen small houses are uncommon in logging camps. There is considerable evidence of women and children at the camp, as well as evidence of a winter occupation, which again was very uncommon at logging camps in this region. There is a very high proportion of personal items, clothing, work boots, and unbroken dishes left at the site. There is evidence that the residents were hiding some valuable items at the site. This hiding of items is known to have occurred by some Japanese as they prepared for internment. In the history of the area written in the late 1940s, there is mention of a group of Japanese once living in an abandoned logging camp in the valley. So let's recap what we think might have happened. Based on what archaeologists have discovered at this site, it appears that after its use as a Japanese logging camp for a few years around 1920, a group of people continued to live here in relative isolation. They were likely able to maintain their identity as a way to live a life free of explicit racism in urban areas. The men, and perhaps some of the women, likely maintained jobs in nearby communities, necessitating a walk of about 90 minutes through the forest to the closest bus stop. It appears that when residents got word of the forced relocation of people with Japanese descent in 1942, they hid some valuable objects, packed what they could carry, and simply left the majority of their belongings behind. Archaeology field work at this and other camps in the Seymour Valley have been done by more than 200 archaeology students at Capilano University located close to the Seymour Valley in North Vancouver, Canada.